What's up, everybody? It's Brian with Happy Thumbs Gaming, and we've got Xandar Free Room for you today. That's right, we got some more LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 coming through. We got all of the collectibles in this area. Now, this area is rather tricky. There happens to be a third race. You can see we got two checked off down there. That's right, there is a third one. However, we do not have a van in order to complete it. Now the rumors are, and Tyler P kind of gave us this tip that Captain's 4x4 should be able to get the job done for us, as that's what he used. However, it didn't work for us. Now, you don't see that in this video, but we tried it not only in this area, but also in Egypt, and it didn't work. So uh, you might try using the 4x4 for that, but you don't need it in order to complete this area and get that boom boss battle. So for whatever reason, there's an extra race that opens up right now as we beep, 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 beep the computer here, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it's not required in order to complete Xandar area. So we're gonna go ahead and come back for that race later, and on that note, we want to go ahead and remind you, we do have quick links down below in the video description so that if you have a particular item or maybe you need to find out how to free one of those Stan Lees, go ahead and use those quick links to get you through quickly and easily to what you need. Now, this video has a few edits, a little more than usual, as there were a couple of these puzzles that just, I don't know if it was user error or if something just wasn't going my way or, or what, but in this particular case, this happens to be one of them right here. So puzzle one, it, it's got like this giant soccer ball shooter and we need to load balls up. So first we need to use a grappler to go ahead and pull the plug and free us some soccer balls or footballs, depending on what part of the planet you live on. And we're going to go ahead and use somebody with telekinesis to stuff this machine in the back filled with them. Now, you only need, I guess, one, technically. For, that, that's kind of what I figured out in the end. But you might need three or four, as there are a few items to shatter. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to get our aim on and then get our blast on. And then uh, we're going to see some glass come shattering down. Now, this is kind of overkill here as I have an extra one I'm loading up in here. And like I said, there are a few edits throughout this video and this puzzle happens to have one of them. Once you get all of the soccer balls loaded up, use a strong character like Drax to go ahead and rip down or rip off the battery panel here. And all of a sudden we can see that there's a tracking spot here. So we'll choose a tracker. Look at that. Hey, wait a minute. Who, who, who are you? What, what, what's going on here? How come there's two of us? Twins, Basil. Regardless of who you choose, we're going to go ahead and recommend you follow this path all the way along. There are some methods to kind of cheat or speed this process up. I don't think this any of our methods would work in this one, though. However, you might try it. You might try going uh, all the way to the left at the beginning instead of to the right, I guess it was. So, uh, As you can see, we come all the way around to the end. It's basically right where we started, but about two steps to the left. And we'll go ahead and build up those gold bricks. And it turns out it's some sort of a power cell, like a battery-like thing. And now we've got a push switch on the left-hand side, and we've got a pressure-sensitive plunger on the right. We jump on it, and it pows that vessel in the back right in the kissa. And it shatters down, but it doesn't give us anything but studs. Now, this one on the right is also red. It's got red on it. Notice I blasted it, but I didn't take it down. So there is a little bit of precision that appears to be needed here. Now I say appears because, you know, again, it could be user error. It may have just been some weirdo glitch in the game, but I got both of them shattered. And I'm like, woohoo! Wait a minute. What's going on here? I don't got anything to show for it. I know I got to do something with that middle one there as it's got all the dog food and my gold brick reward for completing this. But I just, I, okay, so I think, okay, I'm going to blast it, right? Watch this. Oh, wait, what? what? Okay, let's try it again. Okay. Now, my mistake there is I should have moved the dial a little bit before shooting again, and I get it all loaded up, and I'm just trying to figure this out here still, and all of a sudden, the camera follows the ball. It pows it, but doesn't destroy it, and look at that. The doggies get their food, and we get our brick. A little kibble and bricks, huh? Kibbles and bricks. Sweet deal. We'll go ahead and keep on keeping on to the old... Well, I guess we're going to the back left corner. The next one happens to be a mission. That's right, Yondu's over here. Now, keep in mind, we are skipping the Stanleys till the end. Why, do you ask? Well, it's because they give us a gold brick as well. And for whatever reason, uh, I like keeping the puzzle gold bricks separate. So we add those at the end to not confuse our gold brick count. It helps me with my quick links and all that too. So if it's just for me, I guess it's just for me, but it makes it easier for me if that helps make it. Look, look at this. <laughs> 
You know, I've been playing a little bit of Call of Duty World War II lately, and I find that the characters often will push you out of the way. Like, like if you're trying to get through a door right at the spawn, somebody else is probably trying to get through that door too. And for some reason, I'm always the guy getting pushed out. I'm always the yondu of the situation. I'm always getting pushed into the corner and blocked. And uh, anyhow. You can see we arrive at location one. Yondu basically wants us to take out a handful of characters. And once we get all of them eradicated, he's going to go ahead and reward us with his trading card. Basically, each group of bad guys leaves behind a few items. So you can see we got nine total items on the left. So uh, all I can, I mean, yeah, you definitely need to collect those. So don't just, uh, you know, kick some teeth in and then wander off. Collect the items that they leave behind. But, yeah, I highly recommend using a large and in-charge character like the Hulk or somebody of his size and strength. I know you guys probably have your own favorites, but Hulk just seemed easy. We had a recommendation a few uh, videos ago. Uh, a couple of viewers recommended we try or requested that we try using the Hulk. So we ripped off our shirts and got all mean and green, and it seems to work pretty good, so not regretting that decision so thank you for that right if that was you I, I wish i had the names right now because there was two of you's two of you's recommended we use the hulk and it's working out rather nicely it had to do with our uh our scorpions remember we were fighting the scorpions we were supposed to be fighting uh uh, uh Nido jr but it did not work out that way so look at this cha 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 roar you're not gonna like me when i'm green you know what i mean <laughs> anybody remember over know what i mean bird anyway Moving along, we've got one more stop to make with old Yondu. And then we should get our character token, a.k.a. his trading card. Now, hey, I noticed over on the left there was a one of those big old beasts like we saw over in the Wild West. And I have to be honest, I've completed this level, and I don't remember having anything to do with that. So I'm going to have to go check that out on another, on another time. That's right. And uh, once I do that, I'll give you... That might be one of those like weird, wonky spots. Like, I know that there's a chicken up in the hills. That's right. One of our viewers found that. Shout out to Simon, I believe it was, if I remember correctly. I could have it wrong. My bad if I got it wrong, but I'm pretty sure I got it right. And let's see here. Uh, who else did we got? We got... Uh, Oh, there was the, the boom box over in the Old West where everyone was dancing, like, under the... the it's really weird. And then now we got that, like, weird uh, creature over there under the bridge. But All right, we collected all the items, smashed all the baddies, and we got Yondu's character token, a.k.a. trading card. And we're going to pick a flying character for whatever reason because we're going to go ahead and try to make our way along the same path we were making before Yondu took us way over here. So turn around. There we go. We're going to head up, up, and away. That's right. This next one's kind of up in the clouds as it's on top of this building. It's a sky rise. We're going to fly up there. And, ooh, this one's kind of tricky. Basically, there is a gold brick inside this housing there, but it's got a power cord that goes down. It's kind of hard to see along the side of the wall there, but if you follow it down far enough, booyaka shall you find yourself a power terminal. So now we need Thor to go ahead and pump, 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 pump it up. But I'm having troubles. And, you know, to be completely honest with you, I should have bought that pink brick for infinite power. Because that way I wouldn't have had to land and, and charge it up, but I do. So I, so if you're having troubles, and maybe I don't know something. Maybe you guys know something I don't. If you can charge whilst flying, let me know. And that's, of course, without using the pink brick for infinite power. But that being said, that would be a handy little trick to know if you did know. So... Once the uh, top's opened up, fly back up there, click go bricks. So you don't have to do it again. I did that once when I was uh, checking things out in one of my earlier missions. I think it was, uh, who, which, what level was it? I think it was, oh, it was Egypt. That's right. I did Egypt and Hala. I played all the way through completely just to kind of get the feel of free roam and, you know, make sure I knew what the puzzles were and all that uh, before I actually did my recording. So I actually played both of those areas twice thanks to a save file that I was able to go back and revert to. Yeah, something I always recommend as I pull up to the next puzzle, which happens to be a gold brick right in front of the cage here. We find a little tracker spot. We're going to select Black Panther as he's got a nice old sniffer on him to follow these tricks all the way around. But uh, yeah, well, like I was saying, I always recommend having an external save. Some of you guys have like PlayStation Plus. Uh, I believe Xbox Live has some sort of a cloud availability as well. 
Um, yeah, but our uh, search found a some sort of a portal here. Now, I know Lockjaw can go in there, too. And why? That's twice I've done that now. Why I end up searching out the same character I've already got out, I don't know. I, I honestly, sometimes I just don't pay attention to what the AI character is. And in this case, it made me look like a fool. So that's twice already. Maybe thir third time's a charm? I don't know. Ho hopefully we don't have a third strike. But yeah, back to my save stuff. I always have an a an external. I was gonna say external. I tried to stop myself too, but then I remembered. Wait a minute, Brian. We're we're recording here. So anyway, I try to use an external drive or source to save my stuff too. I have a PS Plus account, so I save to the cloud often. But I also have a series of USB sticks. Uh, for my recording purposes. Often I'll play two or three levels at a time, and then sometimes I make a mistake and I gotta go back sometimes two or three levels. So, anyhow, we pull up to this next puzzle over here, and you can see the camera shifts quite wide and funny. That's right, it's a funny angle. And I'm gonna skip through a lot of this because I kind of struggled to get this puzzle figured out in a timely and beautiful manner. So, uh, take a flying character, get up top there. Thor didn't seem to want to grab onto that twirly pole, so I switched to somebody who might have a little bit more of an acrobatic like ability. And and Captain Marvel seemed to do the job just fine. But then I uh, have to uh, push the switches and get all of these boingers to face in. Now, I also played, like, musical buttons there and messed that up. It was terrible. I, I had to do it, like, five or six times. But... And I'm sorry I didn't actually show that, but I think it's easy enough that you guys know that basically you just have to have all the boingers pointing in, jump on those levers or switches until that works out for you, and then throw the switch or shield all the way to the top switch. Collect your gold brick, and on to the next mission we go! This one happens to be old Nebula. She is wanting a sister who she doesn't hate. I don't know if you guys have seen the Guardians of the Galaxy movies or not, but if you haven't, I would recommend them. They are pretty good and entertaining, and it gives you a little bit more backstory of what's going on. Huh. As it turns out, we need to put on a costume to make her feel more family-like. And we know just where to do that. So earlier in the video, I mentioned we're going to skip some of the travel stuff. So as you can see here, I take off with Captain Marvel to head my way to the Avengers Mansion. But you know where that is. We've started almost every video there. Not to mention there is a blue ghost stud trail. So I figured, why keep us bored with all that extra flight time? So I moved it out. And we're going to follow our way all the way down into the basement. And once we get in here, we're going to select one of our custom characters. Since I already had one from a previous, f actually it was a story-based mission, I'm going to select Custom 2. Now, I love the way they did this. They actually helped us out tremendously by not only giving us the areas, like in, in this case it's the helmet piece and the body piece, but it also sh it, it like bounces the item you need. So it bounces the category and the item to kind of go, hey, hey, pick me, pick me, pick me, kind of a thing. And it, 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 it's awesome. I love it. You can, oh, man, look at this. Going through, going through. There it is. Oh, I was going to say you can scatter through all that, but that doesn't make any sense either. So, all right. Uh, hey, quick links are available in the video description. Uh, it looks like there's a little bit of a text overlay there. My bad. Should have fixed that, but it's okay. We will all survive. Now, once we get out of the Avengers Mansion, I don't think you can actually quick travel from inside, but maybe you can. Uh, I, I went all the way out. I did edit that out as well. But we want to use the fast travel because it's available to us, and why not? It's going to take us right there, and it drops us off pretty much right where we need to be. So that worked out rather nicely. We'll go ahead and approach her with our newly, awesomely found costume. And she gets all excited, and then we go on a rampage. That's right. Apparently, she didn't want a sister just to love and cuddle with. She wanted somebody to go kick some teeth in with. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can find some bricks to do some rearranging. And I don't believe we'll have any problems as she's got some swords out and certainly looks mischievous in her own ways. Now, we got some, I, I think these are the local coppas. I think those, I, I, but I'm not getting or changing it. Like, no star ratings going up. We're not getting any people's hero challenges completed. Like, nothing really changes. So I, I kind of start running by them. And then I decide, no, let's go back and finish them off. And, and really, it's because she stopped running. So I'm not sure if they're related to this mission or if they're just kind of coincidentally there. Seemed like an abundance of those bad guys all of a sudden when now there's 
none. But anyways, moving along. Make sure you collect a few studs along your journey here. As you know, you can always use a few studs. We're almost 19 billion. And we're still collecting them. But as you guys know, we're going to do a live stream when we get our Gwenpool missions and all of our free roam areas complete. And we're going to go ahead and unlock all of the remaining characters that we did not need. Now, as it turns out, the game allowed us to play our first Gwenpool mission we unlocked without unlocking okay let me say this right without purchasing the unlocked character so uh gwenpool mission number six spooktacular parade saga actually required living mummy and morbius to unlock it now once we did the missions that unlocked them for purchase we thought for sure we were gonna have to purchase them and it turns out the game let us play it without so and then even ironically during the free play not just the story because the story usually makes you play as those story-based characters right so we assume once we got in that we were gonna have to play as those because that's why we we needed to unlock all those but it was funny because during free play it ended up selecting like you know how the ai will kind of auto select characters sometimes like like, you fly off, and it's going to try to keep up with you, so it usually switches to, like, a flying character or something. Well, it switches to Morbius at one point, and I'm able to play as Morbius, not only in story, but in free play. So, it's just kind of a random deal, and, you know, your experience may be a little different. You know, Tyler P. and I have certainly had some different experiences. However, Tyler P. finished the game in, like, a week, and he got it done before, I think, even before the first update came out. Now, we are well past uh, the 30-day mark since this game has come out. And, you know, there's been a couple of updates. So Tyler and I were wondering if maybe that's why, like, the 4x4 worked for him but is not working for me. Uh, you know, they were pretty specific in that you needed a van to play, you know, to race those races. And, and the Captain's 4x4 I don't think is considered a van, right? I mean... I don't see how that would be, but maybe it is. Maybe it's a big 4x4 van. I, I knew a guy here in town that used to drive a big old 4x4 van. It was the craziest thing i ever seen, but uh, shout out to Scammer. I doubt you're listening, but you know who you is if you're listening. Anyhow, uh, moving along, we go ahead and cha-cha-cha-cha that last one down there, and we got one more spot to go to if memory serves me correctly. And once that gets dealt with, we'll go ahead and be rewarded with her character token, or like I like to say, her, her little uh, trading card. What do you guys think? Uh, those purple swords are pretty awesome. Uh, they, they got a blue glow to them that Reese really enjoyed. Blue and purple are two of Reese's favorite colors, so getting those matched up. And, and then like an aqua blue, too, is, is also very important. So, uh, you know, he's got Sonic Blue on there, which, as you guys probably remember, or maybe you don't know, Reese is like a huge Sonic the Hedgehog fan, has been since he was, like, born. Uh, it's crazy. Anyhow, uh, that being said, he also likes the aqua blue and purple. So uh, Nebula, color-wise, is one of his favorite characters. I don't know what his favorite character actually is, but that brings me to the next question. What's been your favorite character so far? It's been a while since I've had you guys answer down below with some comments, but I'd love to hear what your favorite characters are and why. You know, I, I certainly enjoy Iron Man uh, because of his flight. He's got the silver brick breaking and the gold melter, or the heat ray, as I like to say. And, uh, you know, so he gets me where I want to go quickly, and he can do a fair amount of the things that I need done. Now, uh, as far as strength character goes, I usually go to Drax because it generally just defaults to him. So that, that's kind of been my go-to for this game. As you guys know, I usually have kind of like, you know, set it and forget it. Once I find something that works, I usually don't change it much. And in this case, the game kind of selects things for me, so that's kind of nice. But uh, all right, we got Nebula all tucked away. We just need to poitus her. We're not going to do that, though, because we're going to save it for our live stream that we're going to do. And we're going to fly right over Nova Prime in that mission there. And, oh, it's time to get some Hexagon Blitz on. Now, you know, we've heard quite a bit about this throughout the game's play. We, we've heard, like, you know, the locals talking about it. We've heard some mentions of it from the main characters as well. And it's our chance now to get our dance on. It's really just a matter of memory. It's kind of it's kind of a combination of like Dance Dance Revolution and, and that old, you know, Simon Says game. And hey, Iron Man, you're about to mess things up for me there, buddy. Mind, mind getting off the old blue plate there, sir? Uh, hey, not so I. Oh, 
Good thing it doesn't trigger it, but uh, he's about to trigger me. <laughs> All right, I did make a mistake. I don't know if you guys caught it. There was a slick little edit there. Uh, the yellow looks like the clear, so I messed that up. Once the clear lights up, it has kind of a yellowy orange uh, color to it, and so it threw me for a loop, and I messed up. So, but I'm, you know, I got some editing skills now. As our YouTube channel will show you, we've uploaded over 2,000 videos, and although I've had help uploading some of those in the past from like Jeremy, Mark, and Doug, and uh, Tyler P, and uh, there's a handful of other. I think Mel, uh, Mal did a couple of videos as well, and uh, yeah, so definitely some some contributions, but you know. Percentage-wise, I, I do believe I'm kind of up in that 65 to 70 percent of those 2,300 videos are from moi. I should do a head count someday and see how many videos, or kind of a rough estimate of how many videos, because that'd be interesting to know, right? Like, you know, I've been doing this for a minute now, and, and it's kind of like uh, it's been fluctuating full-time, part-time throughout the five years I've been doing it, but. Uh, be interesting to see how many videos I've actually done. Got me wondering. So, all right, Nova Prime. This character token is going to unlock. This is another one of those situations where Tyler P's experience was very different than mine. Tyler P uh, did some research, or I guess found out through his playing that, you know, he needed to unlock Taserface by completing his mission. Mantis by completing her mission and Nova Prime by completing her mission. Once all three of those were complete for him, then he was able to play a Gwenpool mission. For us, as you can see, we haven't unlocked Taserface, we haven't unlocked Mantis yet, and we are currently doing Nova Prime. As soon as we get done with this mission, it unlocks for us. So, we know for sure Nova Prime is a requirement. What we don't know is, is if somehow the game glitched out for me, or maybe Tyler just did them in an order that seemed like they needed to be done that way. You know what I mean? So it's, it's sometimes it's kind of hard to tell because, you know, Tyler doesn't always replay levels after something goes right or wrong. I mean, if something goes wrong, he usually goes back, I'm sure. But uh, I'm speaking out of term here for you, Tyler. Anyways, uh, my point is, is that uh, we are for sure we know that you need to go ahead and finish this particular mission in order to open that up. Now, Taserface and Mantis, if, if you do this one and it doesn't open up, I highly recommend doing the Taserface and Mantis missions, which are both found in this particular video and in this area. However, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head which mission number they are, and I'm trying to move my editor further so I can see ahead, but it's not letting me, so my bad. But uh, essentially, we're just running around here. We got all these little concession stands we need to smash. Now, these are not here until you activate this mission. So you're not going to, like, wander around and see these until you talk to Nova Prime right there in front of the main building, eh, pretty much in the center of Xandar. Once you do that, they'll all pop up and you can flow around. Now, they're all on the compass, too. So I, I didn't show you on the map individually where each of these are. You know, I figured kind of me flying around was more than enough as they're already on your compass. And that's kind of the case with most of these free roam videos. Like, I know that some of these puzzles are kind of tricky, but I would say probably, I, I, my guess, I'm just guessing, but I would guess 95% of you have no problem with 85% of these puzzles and stuff. Like, like without even blinking an eye, you guys are solving these. I, that, that's, that's my guess. Now, there are a few of these that aren't obvious, and some of you haven't played a lot of LEGO games, and, and it may be completely new and different to you. But a, a lot of these, for the, the way that you can actually, like, see all the collectibles in each area. Oh, here we go. See, look at that. Unlocking Nova Prime unlocks Gwenpool Mission in Xandar. So, again, your experience may differ ever so slightly. And if it didn't unlock and you still have yet to do the Mantis and Taser face missions, uh, those are uh, over closer towards, like, the monorail. Like, uh, right right to the right. Right to the right. You see those two missions right there? To the, yep. The, the, not, not the puzzle we're going to, but the missions to the right. So, and anyhow. Now, this next one. This one's kind of tricky. This one actually threw me for a loop. I had to go find it. But... You can see I'm targeting some bad guys over there. I, I targeted a puzzle, and then I noticed that there was uh, some a citizen in peril. And, you know, I'm trying to do at least one hero, like the people's hero, in every area. Kind of like I'm trying to blow up a car in every area. So when I get to the end, I don't have like a hundred of the cars. and uh, So I've got some of them kind of accumulated as I've gone. But, all right, back to the puzzle itself. 
So there are four of these little gold plates that you need to melt and then switches you need to stand on. The first one is right in front of the fountain and thanks to a nice cinematic pan every time you go and step on the switch, I was able to do a really clean edit there. I totally messed this up. It took me 15 minutes to find all four of these. Not even kidding. Uh, and on that note, this video uh, was like an hour and a half long when I started, and it's going to be just under an hour when I finish. So uh, I certainly edited a lot out, including some of the non-essential stuff like me being a noob, not knowing what to do. And, and, and here I was just talking about like, you know, this high percentage of people having no problem solving most of them. And, and then I run into one of these ones that was tricky. Now, this one I saw earlier. And what's, what's up with the reflection there? Did you see that? It was like going the wrong way but uh this one i saw earlier so i knew it was there it was actually the other two that threw me for a loop and i, I thought for sure they'd be nearby and then and then it was like if you go too far away too that's something that should be noted as well if you go too far away from this puzzle it actually resets so you might have to do it again but uh, they're all within you know uh, a couple steps or so from the main puzzle starting point and that being said i think the hardest point of all of that after finding them was actually getting that gold brick out of the fountain so Next up, we've got a mission with Aisha. You guys remember uh, Aisha? Uh, you guys probably don't remember that. That's an old school song from uh, ABC. Remember that? Anybody remember ABC? I don't even know if you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. If you do, leave me a comment. That's twice now. I've given you an opportunity to interact with me. And if you guys know what I'm talking about, that would be pretty awesome. What, what that would do is it would probably date you in time. It would probably make you a little bit older. Um, or it make you really good with Google, one of the two. All right, this next mission for Aisha happens to be kind of a fetch quest. we got to go find three drones that are down. She wants us to smash them so that nobody gets information from them. Now, we can see where each of these drones are based on the live feed that's coming to these three terminals. And for us, it's easy. It's the Sphinx. It's the Statue of Liberty, and it's Kun Lun Ung, however you say it. So we're going to go ahead and use the fast travel to go to Egypt, because why would we want to fly? And as it turns out, the first drone is right here on the left pyramid, if you are flying to the Sphinx from the rest of the world. Um, and there we go. So that, that's, that's what I meant. It's the left pyramid when the purple wall is behind it. We're going to go ahead and just smash it. Look at that. Smash. One of three complete. Now, because we haven't been to Kun Lun Un or whatever it is. Kun Lun Whatever it is. You know what I'm trying to say. But because I haven't been there yet, I don't have a fast travel. And the same would apply to the Statue of Liberty as we have not completed Manhattan. That would probably be the closest fast travel point. Now, I could be wrong on that, too. There may be a closer one. But regardless, there wasn't one available for us because we haven't done any of those areas. But this one's kind of easy to find, too. It's right in front of the main temple at the top of the hill. And then we're going to fly through the top two buildings here and bust a hard right around over to the library. Oh, I got a little hard. A little too hard there, huh? It's right in the side of the building. That'd be cool if you could blast through the building high some of the superhero movies and stuff like planes or even like Mission Impossible that go like through the buildings. That's the next step for Lego games, I think. Just going through the buildings. All right, I'm going to show you on the map real quick where we is. It's out on the tip of Liberty Island and Buyuka Shao. All three have been smashed. Now, rather than fly all the way back, which could take us some time, we're going to go ahead and use the fast travel point. And wait a minute, where are you going? You're going the wrong way, Brian. All right, turn around and head back to that purple waypoint marker or follow the blue ghost uh, trail all the way back to Aisha. Anyways, moving on from my childhood stuffs, we'll go ahead and take congratulations and take her trading, I mean her character token. I, I still think they should be called trading cards or some of some sorts. I get it. They're tokens. They've always been tokens. I, I, I complained about them changing quests to missions. That would be another complaint. <laughs> I'm sure I'd be like, wait a minute, what are you doing? But uh, anyway, hey, guess what? Pat yourself on the back. We are almost to the halfway point, and we are to gold brick number seven, which is found from solving puzzle number seven. So once you get inside the building, uh, you go ahead and use the flying character to do so. Find somebody that can use the digging ability to dig up a treasure chest and give it the old pal right in the kissa and collect your gold brick. Now we got a puzzle over on the freeway here. This one was kind of tricky. I didn't like this one. And I didn't like this one for a couple of reasons. One, it, it was kind of a cheeky placement. 
Like I've been telling you guys, follow the halo, and, and it should get you there. This one is clearly underground. Depending on where you go, though, you go in different places. So there's kind of like this little spot right in the middle here. I think I show you on the map. There we go. Right in the middle of the, like the main two highways split off, right in the V. Drop down underwater, and then we've got this guy who's got this checkerboard path and this crazy puzzle we got to solve. So I got to be honest. I, I, I first of all, I messed it up. I like I didn't realize we had to incorporate the pieces in the back there. So yeah, that's the first piece that I'm gonna give you for advice. The next piece is it's pretty obvious what needs to go where. It's just time consuming. So you want to make basically an enclosed house. And, you know, you've got the back pieces, the front pieces. Every piece kind of has a curling side, whether it's curling forward, curling back, curling, you know, whatever. I, uh, you know, I got them all kind of lined up here, and that's good. I got these in the right place. I just got to push them all the way down, which is, again, time consuming. So, uh, you know, I kind of give you an overview. I don't show you every piece going into place. We're getting ready to do a couple more transitions here to speed this up. Look at that. I gave him the old pow with a rocket just because this is redonkulous. Should have hired somebody else. I know apparently we left him stranded. I don't know who it was, but they're getting reprimanded. I'll tell you that much. But all right, puzzle solved. That's what it should look like. I gave you kind of an idea as we went through uh, the different pieces where they should go. It's really simple. Like I was saying, really, I think harder harder part is finding it and actually getting down under. And then the next part that's kind of a pain is the fact that you got it's just time consuming. So, all right, once we get up above, right up on top of that happens to be a race. This is that race I was talking about earlier that requires a van, which we don't have. Now, you may have already completed Manhattan and you may have the van. If you do, great. If you, the captain's 4x4 works for you, even better. However, this race is not required, I repeat, not required to get the boom boss battle and finish up our Xandar free roam area. However, we do need a boat to do the next two races. So that's right. We're going to go ahead and build one now. I found out the hard way, too, that if you fly out to the race starting point, you cannot spawn a boat. At least I couldn't. So uh, I went back and flew there, made a nice little edit, and we went ahead and spawned a boat. Happens to be Captain Stacy's boat. We earned it earlier in a previous free roam, and it is very handy. Very, very handy. Now, uh, let's see here. I think it was Free Roam. I, I, I might have that wrong, actually, but uh, off the top of my head, I feel like it was Egypt Free Roam that we got Captain Stacy's boat. Just saying. I'd have to go back and look, but just saying. Turns out there are 35 checkpoints. You just got to kind of pay attention to which way the next checkpoint is angled as it's going to be really the only way to tell where the next one is. Now, if it's right in front of you, you're going to see it right in front of you. But there's a couple of doozies that are like hard turn to the left, hard turn to the right, or almost like a 180 like you'll see coming up here. But uh, if you mess up, all you got to do is hit the head. Yeah, there's one right there. And I almost overshot that one. And, oh, back that way. Now I've kind of got, like, the serpentine, serpentine going there. And I am not trying to do a serpentine right now. That's not what I'm after. But, uh, yeah, so basically just be on the prowl for the circle button restart or the B button restart if you make any mistakes. And what's this guy doing? And, and you know what? I should have gone right over the top of him. I should have knocked his block off. Let's be real. The physics of me and my momentum and his little tiny body and head. Oh, uh, it does not look good for him. But hey, for us, we got ahead and finished. And I still have plenty of time. So even if you make some mistakes, you go slow, whatever the case may be, you should have no problem getting the Loki Classic character token added to your arsenal. Now, we have another race right here. This is another one. This one's kind of tricky as it's underwater. It doesn't require a boat. It is for characters. So it doesn't matter which character you have. I don't know if any of these characters are faster or slower underwater. You know, there may be kind of a, a character or two that has some underwater abilities, perhaps, that do some uh, some better swimming. But uh, I, Iron Man did quite fine for me. I will say that I did make a mistake and I had to do this race twice as well. So... Turns out it's actually a foot race after you get through the water. So it's kind of like a triathlon or at least a biathlon because... Uh, we start in the water and we end up on foot. 
But uh, I don't know if we finished doing any aerial stuff or not. I do. I, I get my fly on. So I guess it is a triathlon. For me, it's a triathlon because I'm on foot for a minute. I'm underwater swimming. And I'm also in the air. Now, don't be confused. That's that race up above that requires a van. I really wish I would have been able to get that out of the way just so it wasn't confusing. But really, it's not because it's white and we want the yellow rings. Now, speaking of the yellow rings, that one was tricky. That one's, look at that. I missed it. And then I missed it again. Third time's a, well... Maybe. I promise I make it all the way through. And look, oh, I'm on foot now. So I, water and feet. So biathlon checked off. And here we go. Now, if you get it just right, which I failed right there. You, you got you to gotta get it just right. Like, it's really kind of tricky being off the ground, really low, but still flying. I managed to pull it off. And look at this one. You want to talk about tricky. Back to the water we go. Under and then backwards. Ooh. I was backwards man there for a second. Good thing, too, because I almost missed it. Now, keep in mind that there is an overall time that you need to complete this in. However, each ring gives you an allotted time before the next one, before you fail. So I think it's like 10 seconds. Sometimes it gets a little higher. Maybe maybe it's 12 seconds. But regardless, you got two clocks that you're working against, and that's not a whole lot of fun. Now, I messed that up, and as you can see, I went super fast over uh, what we were rewarded with there. But it was spider man homemade costume there so we got that homemade spider-man character token for completing that second race now next up we've got a puzzle this one was tricky in the sense that i went the wrong way and it's also kind of tricky as i really didn't ever find the solution completely now there's a couple of things that give us hints uh, but I walk up and I just push a button. Beep. I, I pulled the Reese. I just walked up and pushed a button. I had no idea what the outcome was going to be, but I wasn't thinking about that. So uh, as it turns out, it took me a minute to figure out the combination. And rather than this torture you through me struggling and failing, I'm just going to go ahead and show you. So it was star, blue circle, red, whatever, uh, blue, purple triangle, and then green. I think, I think that's how it went. Once you get inside, though, Here's where the other solution is. So you got to do another solution here. And it turns out that this one happens to be a little different. So I, watch. I try to do the original one. Triangle. Uh, blue. Oh, red, whoops. Whoops. All right. Let's go ahead and try it. But let's go triangle. Blue circle. And let's go star. Oh, wait. Maybe it is. Maybe it is the same. Red. No, it's different. It's different, right? Oh, it, that was 10 seconds ago. But anyways, uh, follow what I do on screen, not what I'm verbalizing. That's my uh, that's my <laughs> that's my golden ticket for the day for you. But uh, once you get the puzzle solved there, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and move on. So uh, up next, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? We got to get out of the water first. It's cold. I can't imagine it's warm in that water. Xandar doesn't look like it. Well, I take that back. Xandar's got palm trees. It's got to be warm. Oh, swing and a miss there. All right, next up, Puzzle 10, Gold Brick 10. Where are we going here? Heading off over to the left towards Asgard. And this one is fairly simple, too. We've seen this guy before. There is a gold brick inside one of these little shopping centers little shopping kiosk we uh see that there's some shattering that needs to happen so let's see if we got some long distance and oh blah, 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 we got it let's see about the gold brick itself can we make uh oh we got the we got the case next to it uh third time's the charm uh, all right so I, I noticed that the color of the switch here the control panel was off close to the color of the glass that we shattered turns out it is not the same you can't shatter that so uh, I started looking around and uh, down below what do we got nope nope turn around go back go back go back oh look at that look at we got this little box here that we got it's not even a box it's like a rock go ahead and smash that bad boy right next to the ramp there and build those pieces into a gravity booster then we'll switch on over to Peter Quill aka Star Lord and uh, we'll rip that stuff down. We're literally pulling the bottom right out from under it. And now we need some telekinesis to finish it off. So basically, we're hot wiring the door here to open up for us. So a little open says me, if you will. And nope, nope, wrong button, wrong button. Uh, no, actually, right button, wrong angle. So 
I started uh, shooting off my, I guess it was some sort of a heat ray she's got. I'm not sure if it's heat or what she, yeah, it, never mind. That answers that. It's fire. She's on fire. All right, now we need that loud mouth black bolt again. Get in here, black bolt. Rawr! That's right. We got to charge it up and let loose one more time. I don't know if he's belching or what he's doing, but we'll take it regardless. And speaking of take it, we'll take that gold brick and move along now to... So next up, we got Stan Lee. We're going to freely, freely, freely. Now, this is going to open up an opportunity for us to complete another challenge as well. Now, a couple of you have wanted the Underwater Avenger Challenge, but we have not been able to do it because we needed to do this first. So we're going to go ahead and bust open this wall right here. It's going to give us access to a Ms. Marvel panel. We're going to go ahead and get oh so small and hack that terminal. Once we do that, it's going to open up the door to the left here and inside is Mr. Stan Lee and one of the little fishies we need to find so I do believe there are five sets in fact there might be more than that my notes are actually just out of reach unfortunately but uh, we will probably do that challenge pretty soon as that has been a viewer request and you know we don't always do all requests because sometimes you guys want a game like I had a request for a game from 2008 the other day I was like, are, are you, are, is this a legitimate request? Are you, like, trolling me? And he was, like, being serious. And, and if you're listening, I'm not making funny. I'm just saying, like, I, I can't always complete a request because not everybody wants to see content from a game from 2008, right? I mean, that's 10 years ago. So that being said, uh, you know, we've had a couple of you request that Underwater Avenger Challenge. So we'll try to get that up as soon as possible. Now, next up, we've got a mission. This is that Mantis mission I spoke of earlier when I was saying if you if you completed the Nova Prime mission and you are not able to access that Gwynpool and you're in a hurry to do so, uh, you know, this would be the next step I recommend would be to complete the Mantis mission, which is right over here in front of this giant green emerald-like building. And she's just standing there. And basically, she wants us to go around. And I, I, I don't know if I really understood this mission. I, I know she's an empath, so she can use her powers to kind of influence or feel what other people are, are feeling. And, and that being said, uh, I, she feels these negative vibes. I guess we're just kind of trying to scrub the negative vibes. Like, uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of dudes that are a bummer, man. And so, like, we're going to go and, like, make them not such a bummer. And, uh, you know, hey, I, I got to be honest, there's a few times of, of the week that I wouldn't mind she came by and, and spliced up my mood a little bit. Or perhaps maybe even Reese's. Oh, burn. I shouldn't be talking about Reese. He's not here to defend himself or to, or to say that I'm the one that really needs the mood change. <laughs> All right. Moving along from the mood changes. Uh, essentially, there are five, uh, no, four of these guys. They're right there in front of me on the left-hand side. Each one kind of is specific to a different area area so we actually have to leave Xandar to get there now this first one we went to and there are no there's no right or wrong way or particular order to do these but the one we went to was in Egypt and we did that because we could see he was wearing the you know the Egyptian cap so that was the only one that really stood out obviously to us so you know it kind of looked like the girl in the pink maybe from Manhattan and the other guy looked like he was from Sakar but you know we weren't sure so we went to Egypt first that was kind of weird I I, I, for, I don't I totally forgive you if you hit the mute button right now I, I I'm about to mute myself that being said we got one of four done so we're gonna go ahead and go up up and away and fly to the next one which uh, real quickly I thought well maybe I have a fast travel point to get there but I don't so we're going to fly all the way over to Manhattan as that really I didn't know where I was going. I was following my compass down in the bottom left hand corner. I had a hunch, though, that this gal in the kind of pink purpley jacket was over here because we saw a girl. We did a mission uh, earlier in one of our challenges where she was standing over here on the corner. So I come to her and it's her. But she don't want to talk. She's not no tucky. So I uh, turn around and as it turns out, whoa, wait a minute. Twins. Twins bezel! So, uh, I, I don't know what's going on here. Maybe she had goggles on, the other gal doesn't. I don't know. Regardless of what it is or isn't, she happens to be over here on the other side of the race. Now, uh, that race may or may not be what we need in order to get the van. I, I don't remember. There, I think there's a mission that we need to complete. Uh, I, gosh, I can't, again, my notes, I, I got a whole stack of papers, and I'd be rifling through them right now if they were a little bit closer, but they are not. 
And I could pause it, but it's kind of not essential. So uh, up, up, and away we go to the next one. Two down, two to go. Uh, we kind of got the feeling like Buddy might be from Sakar. Sakar? I, I always say that wrong, I'm sure. But uh, that ended up being the case as we fly over here. We follow our compass. He happens to be on top of a building, if I remember correctly. And I, Yep, see, there he is. I could see him in the top right there, but I didn't see him when I flew in here. So I, like, walk all the way around the building, just assuming he's on the ground. Because, like, why would he be on the roof? How would he be on the roof? This is, like, ancient times, and he somehow has, like, I, I mean, I guess I can fly, so maybe he can fly, too, but... He can fly, he can fly, he can fly. And look, there's some people over here. No, there, that's not him. No, no. There, oh, there's the guy we're looking for. Oh, no talkie. He's waving at us. He's like, hi. Nope, no good. So we're not near the spot on our compass anyway. So I fly up in the air to get a better view of things. And, ooh, there's a web. And there he is. So that's how he got there. Cheeky. Ooh. All right, so he's on this roof right here. Huh? So basically the one single building just to the front left of the main Colosseum. And we'll go ahead and say what up and uh, turn that frown upside down, if you know what I'm saying. And yeah, all right, come on, come on, come on. This is a long one. This is definitely one of the longer missions. In fact, I think when I was looking at the uh, actual quick link stuff, I believe it was like five minutes and 30 seconds long or 35 seconds. So it's long. So, uh, hey, thanks for sticking around and hanging out with me. I always enjoy your company, and I hope you enjoy mine. I know a lot of you leave some really pleasant comments behind, thanking me for the videos and stuff, and I always read, and I try to respond to many of those as... as most of you probably have found out I spend a good 15 to 15 minutes to maybe an hour some days kind of sitting and responding. And I don't always do it in one run either. Sometimes I do it in a couple of different spots. And lately I've been, uh, even had the notifications turned on my phone. So they're going right to my phone. So they're pretty uh, responsive <laughs> responses. Like I'm quick, quick, fast. So, hey, we got Mantis for completing. That's right. We turned all those frowns upside down. And it turns out one of those people were in Xandar. It was right basically where we started. And oh, it's Taserface! Now, here is the other mission that may or may not be required to unlock that Gwenpool mission regarding... I, I think it's Gwenpool mission number nine? I think it is. Let's see here. Nah, notes are out of reach. I tried to reach, but I couldn't get to them. All right, uh, let's see here. Taserface wants us to what do we got to do i think we got to go around oh yeah we got to ask people a bunch of questions and once we ask them the questions uh we have to answer two correct ones in order to give him kind of the idea of what what people think his nickname should be so again we are off flying around to these mysterious people on our compass and this dude listen boys and girls of all ages listen here a road like this is not a good place to be standing, and although he is wearing at least sort of light-colored clothing, I highly recommend seeking shelter somewhere other than the side of the road. Uh, but all right, so we went ahead and talked to him real quick. He didn't have a whole lot to say. Uh, this next one is all the way over here inside. That's right, inside the Coliseum of Sakaar. And, oh, well, watch out for that. That's something else. Don't mess with that. Here he is over here, standing here all by his lonesome. Looks like that frown is back. We're going to have to pull out Mantis and turn that frown upside down again. But, all right, he's telling us some stuff about, I believe, the museum. I, I wasn't paying attention, but uh, we got, we'll have all these notes ready to select from. So it's like multiple choice when we get back to Taserface. And if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. I do believe if you get them correct without any wrongs, you get more studs than you do. If you get them wrong, I, I'm not positive on that. That'd be something you could verify for us. But uh, this next one's all the way over in Nueva York, kind of tucked in alongside a building here. And, yep, that's one he's saying. Everyone's too scared. Same, same kind of topic about the museum. So we got two people saying something about museum, and one dude's not really saying much of anything. And now we got one. No, we got two more people, looks like, on our compass left. And let's see here. This is a long flight. I probably should have edited this out as well. Uh, but I try to keep everything as intact as possible. Like some of the stuff like that underwater puzzle earlier. Uh, 
some of the stuff's just got to go. But, you know, like going from point A to point B, that's the important stuff. Like, I think that's like when I was before I was doing Happy Thumbs, that is the kind of stuff that drove me nuts when I was looking at videos. Like when, when you had to do something important or go somewhere of importance and, and the person was just like, all right, you have to do this. And then all of a sudden they were there. It's like sometimes it's so much easier to find those places if there's like a pathway from, you know, where you are to where you need to be. So, you know, and for those of you who are in a hurry, we try to provide those quick links, too. So try to do the best of both worlds. I know that uh, sometimes my nasally drone gets flapping away and, and it gets a little carried away. But, you know, there's always the mute button for that stuff, too. So I feel like we've kind of got most of our grounds covered. Uh, now we just need you guys to watch and enjoy and hopefully find these videos useful, which, you know, it always helps us by you sharing our videos with your other Lego playing friends. And, of course, liking the videos also helps us, too. You'd be surprised how important uh, simple stuff like that is for, like, our search relevance on YouTube and stuff. So, hey, it looks like the uh, second one down and, nope, fourth one down. Yes, sir. Going to go ahead and get you paid. And on top of getting paid with some studage, we also get the Taser Face character token. So we'll flap that trading card in our pocket and move on as well. And guess what? We are getting pretty close to the end. That is right. We got a gold brick statue right over here. And, you know, these basically have so far have worked out that they cost us 10 gold bricks more than the previous one we've opened. So uh, for us, we have opened four. This is going to be number five for us. That's going to cost 50 gold bricks. Now, it doesn't actually cost the gold bricks. It just requires that you have unlocked or earned that many bricks. So for us, we got quite a few more than that. I think we had 88 or something like that. So it's catching up rather quickly, but we should get about 10 gold bricks per area. And this one, you can see we're getting 12. So we're kind of ahead of that game, at least for now. So this Stan Lee was a pain in the tuchus. So first of all, I went the wrong way. So I, it's just me. This was user error. It's not like it's bad. So uh, you got this glass, right? I, I don't know if you could bust it with a big old belch from Black Bolt or not, but you might be able to. But I found that if you actually take time and spin it forward, it grows this big old plant, and it comes busting out and destroys the glass and gives you a bunch of studs. So do that first. Then rewind time and take it all away. And it's going to reveal two very obvious gold, like, I don't know, some, I guess they're nodes. I mean, they're really tiny and pokey. I'm not sure what they really are, but uh, there's two really obvious ones. And then, of course, a third one on the back. So uh, it took me a minute to figure out all of this stuff. And this is kind of one of those ones that might need a little help, too, because I look, look. There's two of them. See them shiny, chinging away. Ching, 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 shiny, look at me. And we switch to a character who can melt them down. And there, there's one, there's two. And then you think, okay, here's the second one. I'm done. Nope. Hence the edit right there. You probably didn't notice it because it's a pretty good one. A little bit of a jolt in the screen there. But there's one on the backside. So go ahead and bust that third one off. And booyaka show. We have officially freed Lee, freed Lee, freed Lee. And he says, Ex oh, he actually doesn't say Excelsior. Not this time. But he gives us a whole bunch of studs. Oh, he does say Excelsior. And uh, again, we're not going to question where Mr. Lee pulls those studs out from. He's got a couple of blues in there, so it's definitely worth picking up, even if some hand sanitizer is needed afterwards. So, all right, uh, next up, guess what? It has officially unlocked a boom boss battle. Now, we have already taken on Vulture once in the story. It was actually part of one of the earlier missions. We had to catch him as we swung through Manhattan with Spider-Man. Now, there were some rings that I thought you had to go through, and really the rings helped speed you up, but if you didn't fly through the rings, uh, it took you longer to catch them. Well, we're going to have to fight and fly, f basically fly behind him and catch him again, but there's no rings this time. So I, I'm not using Spider-Man. I felt that Iron Man was a little faster, and uh, may maybe not the fastest. I don't know who the fastest flyer. I almost feel like the Black Bolt is the fastest flyer. It seems like he's just got a little bit extra juice. Could be wrong, though. Maybe, maybe they all fly the same. But this guy, watch this. So he flies a particular pattern. It takes me a, a, a circle or two to figure this out. And essentially what you need to do is you just need to get close enough to him that it, it, it uh, 
Uh, it <laughs> it brings on the encounter. There you go. So there you go. It engages. There we go. That, the, I'm, I'm getting the words that I was losing there with my brain fart. But, uh, oh, no, we don't want to go in pool mission. So, essentially, he flies kind of a figure eight around a couple of these buildings. I'm shooting at him like crazy, thinking that's going to help. It doesn't do a thing. Essentially, what you need to do is just get close enough to grab him. And then once you grab him, you spam the button and fill up the meter. And then you have to do that three times. So, look, he makes like a full lap around everything before I catch him again. And, and my best advice to you is figure out the path. And if you can't catch him still, then cut him off. Go, go the different route. And you'll see what I'm saying. Like, it takes me a while to figure out the right way to do it. So I take that back. I think it's four times we have to beat him down. And, and so there's two. I got, I got the first one. It was kind of a gimme. Second one I caught right around the corner. And then that was the – no, maybe that was the second one. Maybe that was, uh, Anyway, we got, a lot, we got to grab him a handful of times. Now, I'm getting smarter here. I'm, see, I'm starting to cut corners. Like I'm starting to cut corners. I'm not flying out with him because he's going to go the same path. He's looking like he's going to bank to the right and turn and come around Asgard. But he's not. He's coming right back around in Xandar. So – Use that to your advantage. Be smarter than him. Take straight lines. No serpentine. You're actually going to fly a little faster by flying a straight line. And, yep, it's just like racing. You know, you got to take got to take the right optimal path in order to beat your opponents. But, uh, all right, we are coming around here, and I get really tricky. So, yeah, it is more than three or four times. I think it's five times you actually have to grab him and stop him. Watch this. I go around one of the buildings here in a minute. I get really crafty. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're going to do that? Watch this. And, look, I'm taking the inside route, and, oh, uh, I flew right over the top of him. But I didn't, though. He, oh, he stopped. See, he's even taunting me because it's my terrible flight path. But I get it right here in a second. And keep in mind, this is it, too. So, uh, you know, although I appreciate your company. Look at me. I'm, I'm trying to cheat. And I'm getting stuck on everything. And then I get way ahead of him. And then I have to actually come back to – there he is. There he is. Oh, no, this isn't the time I have to come back. Uh, it's coming up, though. I actually get too far ahead and I have to come back. I think the last two times I attack him are that way. And I think this is it. I go hard left. Yep, hard left around the building. And I'm ahead of him, and he stops and waits for me. But, see, he takes that same path at me, so that would be my – go the opposite way. So once you figure out the path, go the opposite way. Give him the old pal right in the kiss and look at me. I'm going around again. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. What you got? What you got? Ooh. Oh, I thwarted your plans. And I spammed that button lastly but not leastly. Vulture Classic is ours. And it's going to give us that boom boss battle check mark too. One more off on our list. So you should have a couple of those for the levels we've already done and a couple for completing story. And look at that. We actually landed right where we started off. I didn't plan that. It just sort of happened. And we got we got the Gwenpool mission, and we do have that race still available in the area, but they are going to be taken on in another video. So, O oh, to the yeah. Gwenpool will probably be up sooner than that race one. We'll probably knock that race out at the very end once we get uh, Manhattan done, which is our last free roam area we have planned. But hey, that's going to wrap it up for LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 Xandar Free Roam. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop me a comment down below. Let me know. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, we want to hear that too. As always, until next time, 